Buenos dias. I am going to talk in English because my Spanish is too terrible to uh, <laughs> inflict upon you. I would like to thank Conival for giving me the honor to talk to such an important meeting. And I would also like to congratulate Conival on this extremely important work they have done. I believe that uh, Mexico, with this new measure, will lead the world in how multidimensional poverty should be measured. Countries in the European Union need to learn from Mexico's example, and not just in the European Union, but around the world. I'm going to talk briefly about human rights and poverty in the European Union because the underlying conceptual basis for the multidimensional measure of poverty in Mexico is a human rights, a social rights perspective. The idea that poverty can be ended comes from the radical thought surrounding the French Revolution. It was argued in 1794 that poverty was not a result of natural law or divine will, it was not an act of God, but was caused by the present imperfections of the social arts. It was further argued that poverty could be ended by universal provision of pensions, grants to the young, sickness benefits, and state education by the fulfillment of social rights. There has been a long, long history of anti-poverty policy in Europe, going back four, five hundred years. At first, the purpose of this policy was the relief of indigenous, to prevent starvation, and that was largely successful. Then it became thought that poverty was caused by the bad behavior of the poor that they were lazy, they did not work, that they spent their money on the wrong things, and the policy became the relief of destitution. The idea was that the social and human rights of the poor would be taken away, that they would not be allowed to live together, they would not be allowed to live at home, they would have to go to a workhouse in the UK, that their social rights would be taken from them, and this would make them change their bad behavior, and therefore poverty would be reduced or disappear. This policy was pursued for over a hundred years. It did not work. You cannot eradicate poverty by removing the human rights of poor people. We know this from our own bad example. In the 20th century, the second half, we had welfare states develop, uh, which led to a great reduction in poverty, but not the eradication. And now in the 21st century, the policy aim is to eradicate poverty by fulfilling people's basic economic, social, and cultural rights, as well as, of course, their political and civil rights. The definition of poverty used in the European Union is one that has been taken from the academic research of Professor Peter Townsend, who was my colleague for many years, and it has been in place since the 1970s. The poor shall be taken to mean persons, families, and groups of persons whose resources, material, cultural, and social are so limited as to exclude them from the minimum acceptable way of life in the country in which they live. This is poverty in terms of not having enough money and not having enough goods and services to participate as a citizen in the society in which you live. You are excluded from the basic rights, the basic uh, goods, the basic uh, ways of living of the majority in your own society. Poverty and human rights are very inextricably linked. Firstly, 
human rights conventions like the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child are universal values. They are not Mexican values, they are not European values, they are not Asian values. They are values that everybody, every country in the world has signed up to. Secondly, Mary Robinson, who was President of Ireland and the former UN High Commissioner of Human Rights, has argued a human rights approach is important because it provides a framework of obligations that has the power to rend uh, governments and more importantly states accountable to their populations. And lastly, a human rights approach is considered to be important because it shifts the emphasis of debates about poverty away from the personal failures of the poor towards the problems that have been created by nation states and international organizations. Hence, poverty is no longer in this context described as a social problem, but a violation of fundamental social and constitutional rights. Human rights opens up the analysis of the structural causes of poverty, rather than only the symptoms. And the impact of government action or inaction on people living in poverty. In this sense, the goal of human rights is to render power accountable, to reconnect power with obligations. This is not about one government or another government. It is about the state fulfilling its constitutional obligations, its international obligations, its national obligations to the whole population, not just the population that is poor. Human rights entails a shift in perspective from need and charity to social and legally guaranteed entitlements and duties. States have a legal obligation for which they should be counted accountable. Seen through a human rights lens, poverty is neither natural or inevitable, but becomes something done to people for whom citizen actors bear responsibility. There is no human right not to be poor, but the United Nations has made very clear that every country in the world has a minimum core obligation, that countries where people are deprived of food, primary health care, shelter, housing and education are prima facie not fulfilling their duties to meet the human rights of the population. One of the main challenges of the 21st century, according to the UN, is poverty eradication. A decent standard of living, adequate nutrition, health care, education, decent work and protection against calamities are not just development goals, they are also basic human rights. Finally, a human rights theory leads you to see that poverty is multidimensional and therefore should be measured multidimensionally and Mexico is leading the world in doing this. The full package of human rights provides a lens through which poverty is seen as multidimensional, encompassing not only low income, but also other forms of deprivation and loss of dignity. There has been a long history of poverty being seen as a problem of governments not fulfilling their obligations. Over 200 years ago, in the humanities, the great diarist Samuel Johnson argued, where a great proportion of the people are suffered to languish in helpless misery, that country must be ill-policed and wretchedly governed. A decent provision for the poor is a true test of civilization. And I have a short time, so I will leave you with the words of Charles Darwin, the great biologist and evolutionist. He argued that if the misery of our poor be caused not by the laws of nature, but by our institutions, great is our sin. Thank you very much.